Hey everyone, Extreme Crypto here. We're here with Wool Financials, a financial ecosystem to grow, manage, and preserve well. A unique crypto project with the most innovative decentralized financial ecosystem that's going to revolutionize the blockchain space. Today we have one of their members, Wayne Bryans. Welcome, Wayne. Tell us a bit more about yourself and why Wool Financials. Hi, Drikus. Yeah, thanks for the warm welcome. Um, so, why Wolf Financials? I am a moderator on Cryptocurrency South Africa. We've got 25,000 members. And based on my contract to the group, uh, Lawrence contacted me and uh, asked me if I was uh, willing to assist him with a crypto project. And... Uh, after what he told me about what he'd already, he'd already um, gained tremendous track the project and put a lot of his own money in. He was also very transparent. And also uh, the company was a legally registered entity. So he ticked most of my boxes as an investor. And based on that, um, I joined him um, on, the, uh, on the team and uh, I'm the tokenomics advisor, um, creating the tokenomics model, the crypto side of things where Lawrence is more of the, in, an expert in the traditional financial world. So my, my background is I started my first business in 1992. I have been through various um, business sectors, uh, property, property construction, uh, security, um, in the motor industry as well. So I've had businesses in quite a few different sectors of the economy. In uh, 2017, I started to get serious about crypto and um, I was actually a team member on another project. The project unfortunately um, stalled due to a hack that we had um, and uh, that led me to this point where I am now. My, my own portfolio grew tremendously. I did uh, quite well during the last bull cycle. And um, the project that stalled taught me a tremendous amount about crypto and all of those, um, all of that education I'm carrying over into this project and trying to rectify everything that, that, uh, that could have been improved there in this project. And so far, so good. That's good to hear. Now you've mentioned previous businesses, so it sounds like you've quite built quite a few. So how does Wolf Financial plan to grow the ecosystem post launch? Okay, so essentially, um, what what Wolf Financials is doing is besides the, the actual token launch, we have looked beyond that. Most, most crypto projects only look at the, the actual uh, uh, token launch and they see that as the business. And that's because their project beyond the token really has a little business case. So they rely on a token price to go up in value in order to, um, to achieve value for the business. So, and this is one of the things that excited me is Lawrence has pre-built a suite of income generating products. They have been proven over and over to generate an income. And these products are the decentralized exchange, the centralized exchange, as well as a peer to peer exchange. So when, when we looked at that, we saw the opportunity to actually grow way beyond uh, um, this because we've now created a self-contained financial ecosystem and as such we saw the opportunity to on-ramp traditional businesses and bring them into the tokenized economy so pretty much on the same basis as what we're doing we want income generating products to come into this ecosystem where we have provided them with all the tools in order for them to to grow their business and to enter the crypto economy. So um, we've already had 
uh, positive response from the market, and we will be launching our first business in quarter four. It's a 15-year-old business with 11,000 members, and we will be tokenizing their business within the Wolf Financials ecosystem. And the big picture is as follows. We hope to create a micro economy where all users within our ecosystem will be able to interchangeably use their tokens from one business to the other within our ecosystem. So we've everything in, in, in the platform fits together beautifully where, where, where we basically provide the infrastructure, the ecosystem, and we on-ramp businesses. And this also helps grow our platform exponentially as opposed to, for instance, going on a big marketing drive and on-ramping users into the ecosystem, uh, um, individual users into the ecosystem, which is a lot slower um, than, than, than the process that, that we've chosen. Not, not to say that we are, we are not going to go on a marketing drive. We, we obviously will. But we just feel that this will give us exponential traction because we're not only bringing the business, we're bringing its users into our ecosystem as well. Which, which will serve to grow the community. You've so that, that in a nutshell is how we plan to, to grow beyond uh, um, the launch of the token. You've mentioned two keywords, the ecosystem and the economy. So how, or explain to the community what you mean by the tokenized economy. Okay, so in, in the tokenized economy, most people miss this in crypto, right? What, what they are tending to do is they are simply uh, focusing on the value of the token. And most tokens, and this is widely accepted in crypto, and many expect 90% of, of tokens not to exist in the not too distant future. And that is because they do not generate and income. And what we have focused on is traditional business principles. So every business that we bring in will have an income generating business backing it. So the token is there as a means to an end. And what it does is it basically just becomes a digital rep representation of ownership of the actual um, uh, underlying business. And the underlying business generates income. The whole idea here is that as opposed to going to a bank in order to expand their business, they can tap into their community, get the community to buy tokens. The, the community has already been using the business. So that level of trust is there. Uh, it, it, it basically allows the community to now share in the profits of the business and um, participate in the, in the growth of the business. We foresee this as a business model that is going to be much widely accepted in the future, as opposed to just creating a token for the sake of creating a token. Now, don't, don't uh, misunderstand me here. I do realize the difference of the payment rails that need to be created. And that is tech heavy. We are not a tech business as such. We are using technology to create a business within the crypto space, but it's not a tech business as such. It has a traditional underlying business that is tokenized. Whereas previously, it was just a token that is basically created um, and that's where the value is derived from. Now, the success of the token depends on them achieving certain milestones and whether that technology is accepted or not. So that in a nutshell is a fundamental difference between what we are doing and the gap and the niche that we've identified here is the tokenized economy. That's what I mean by the tokenized economy. We are actually tokenizing a traditional business, giving users a digital representation and access to, to that underlying business. So they essentially become almost like a shareholder, but we want to steer clear of that word because 
uh, we don't want to be viewed as a security. Thank you. Now, from the economy on to the exchange that's launching soon, why are you launching the exchange without your native token? Okay, excellent question. Right, so this is contrary to what most projects do. Most projects, what they do is they create a white paper, have a roadmap, and then they start to crowdfund. They start with the process. We saw several flaws there and uh, we decided we would improve things. So the first thing that we wanted to do is to build trust. In order to build trust, if you, if you have a working project, uh, a working product that people can actually use, touch and feel before they commit, you're obviously going to get much more trust and ultimately traction. So here's the plan. The way our launch is planned, it's, it's scaled up. So we, we start off with the initial launch token, which launches the project. So that is very small scale because we only, we only releasing 10 million tokens to the open market. Uh, the other allocation of tokens are in various categories to, to uh, ensure that we've got income for, for that particular category. So if it's uh, um, legal, we, we've, we've taken certain tokens there and generated income from that in order to, to, to pay for the legal stuff. So what we've done is um, we launched the token, then we are going to build the community, the DAO. And the DAO um, will immediately be able to start to use the decentralized exchange where they can stake their token and uh, um, earn more tokens for doing so. And thereafter, they will help us launch the actual native token. So we'll, be, we'll have a, an entire community behind us launching this token. So do you see how we're scaling up and gaining traction? Thereafter, we will, within the same sort of time frame, release the centralized exchange to the public at large, where they can test it and use it and all the rest of it. And we will now launch the centralized exchange token with a, an ever-growing community, with the, the community having gone from DAO to beyond that, we, we believe that we'll get exponen exponential growth based on what um, the DAO community can actually put out and the traction that they can gain by leveraging all of their um, contacts. And then they will help us to launch the centralized exchange token. All the time we're scaling up the way the ecosystem is growing. You, you, you know, the thing is, if you go for broke, um, you're going to have uh, to spend a lot, lot more on, on advertising, raise a lot more on a token sale. We, we didn't have to do that. Um, as I said, the founder put up most of his money to actually build these, these, these products. And as such, we could take a much smarter approach, um, a, a much more scalable approach in order to grow the ecosystem. So um, I uh, hope that answers your question, but uh, that's that's how we plan to do it. Indeed. You mentioned and that was the reason for the you mentioned the DAO a few times. So how do you emphasize the DAO functioning? Okay, so um, what, we've, what we've done, we, okay, so the DAO is gonna form a very, very important uh, aspect of this project. Firstly, 70% of all profits generated across all crypto projects will be shared with the DAO. Okay, so the, 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 the idea here is that there are lots of people out there that want to start their own business, but they've got the intellectual capital, they've got great ideas, but they don't have the funds to do so. We will provide them with the funding by virtue of the fact that 70% that will go to the, to the, drought, the DAO treasury 
and through a voting process, they will put forward proposals and vote on those proposals. So let's say, for instance, somebody comes up with the idea that they want to um, acquire a certain company that is a good fit for what we are doing. Um, the community will take a vote. And if the vote is favorable, then that proposal will, will, will be accepted and uh, the funds will immediately be there for them to acquire that, um, that entity. Another potential proposal, and I don't want to preempt anything because what we've done is we, we, we've got a framework of a constitution for the DAO, but if we are going to say that this is genuinely a DAO, we cannot restrict them um, by controlling what the DAO can do because that, that defeats the object of the DAO. So we've got a loosely based uh, a framework that we will propose to the DAO and they will in turn accept it. But any member of the DAO could, for instance, say, you know what, guys, Wolf Financials had a has had a fantastic year. Um, this is what the DAO treasury is looking like. I propose a, spe a special dividend to all investors. And in which, and, and once again, it goes to the community, the community votes. And if the proposal is accepted, then that special dividend, for want of a better term, is distributed to the community um, in the form of tokens. And because we have an ecosystem, what we are what we what we are doing is closing the tokenized loop where whereby um, we can or the DAO can decide, okay, look guys, what what we need to do is we, we want to um, try and uh, give some traction to of X, the, the launch pad uh, um, platform. So all all of the token, all of the payouts this this year or, or this quarter whatever the DAO decides is going to be paid in Ulf X, or it could be this, the, the, the um, centralized exchange token, Ulf C. So those are all options available. And essentially that is how I envisage the DAO working, but it's, it's really up to the community who are going to um, ultimately control and manage this thing um, Wolf Financial's management team will be there um, to oversee the process and to also manage the process as well. I appreciate it. Now, in a few short questions, you've explained a lot about Wolf Financials and I hope the community out there will see it. Wayne, thank you for popping on answering a few questions. I'm pretty sure there will be more questions as we go along. Any final words you want to leave the community with? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks very much for this opportunity, uh, Drikas. And uh, to the community, it is a lot to digest and a lot to understand. And um, we are trying to create a fairer, more mm -hmm. equitable business model that we believe many in the future will, will try emulate. Um, and uh, um, it's simply a case of do your own research, do your homework. And if, and if you feel that this is the type of thing that resonates with you, get on board and get involved. And uh, let's uh, make a small contribution towards changing the world for the better. I appreciate Thank it. you. Everyone, all the links, to the socials the website will be down in the description make sure to go and join it because this is one launch you don't want to miss thank you very much yet again wayne thank you drikas enjoy your day